Well, greetings to all of you, and welcome to the 930 online service for uh, Bel Air Church of the Nazarene. If you're here, you're probably here for one of several reasons. Maybe you're you're new uh, to watching this service, and if so, greetings. It's great to have you here for the first time, and hope that you'll join us again, and hopefully that you'll you'll uh, you'll be inspired and get closer to God because of being a part of this service this morning. Uh, you you uh, could be here this morning because uh, we have an outdoor service later, but you prefer uh, to do this online for a little longer, and. And it could be that you feel uncomfortable uh, going out right now. And if, if that's the case, that, that's okay. Don't feel guilty about uh, doing the online service a bit longer. That's why we're doing it. Uh, you may be a parent who say, hey, my kids uh, aren't ready uh, to do outdoors or to do to, uh, with other people because of the social distancing guidelines. That's okay, too. And uh, we want you to know that we, we're glad that you're here. You're not a bad parent. This is just a tough time for kids. Maybe you're here because you want to double dip. You want to be able to, 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 to do it twice, and you're going to do the online service now, and you're going to do outdoor later, and that's great, too. That this, The worship will be different. The message will be pretty much the same. But uh, I, I believe that if you do that, God will do different things in your heart uh, with each service. And so whatever reason that you're here, uh, I'm excited that you're here to join us in worship this morning. And uh, we're all, we all have definitely have something in common. We're just in a time that's uncertain and it's challenging. And uh, with, with uh, the pandemic, with the unrest in our country, uh, we need times like this to come together and worship and to be able to hear God's voice and, and what he's speaking into what we're going through right now. And I pray and I hope and I believe this service will be uh, that for all of us here this morning. So let's, let's join together in worship and song right now. There is no life without you. You have all that we need. Where you are, every fear is broken. And the darkness must flee. Closer and closer, we want to know you. Reaching out, reaching out. Here in your presence, we want to go deeper. In your light, come alive. There is no one beside. Find belonging, your love is all that 
that can satisfy and Closer and closer We want to know you Reaching out Reaching out Here in your presence We want to go deeper In your life Come alive Closer and closer We want to know you Reaching out Reaching out Till I'm dancing in the 
Psalm 8 today. O Lord, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants you have ordained praises because of your enemies, to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower, little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, all that swims the paths of the seas. O Lord, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful and All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life. You have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life. You have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down I'm surrendered now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have 
this morning. Dear Lord, our hearts are heavy this morning as we think of the unrest that is felt around the country and globally. We've seen protests on the news, read thoughts of our family and friends on social media, and voiced our own opinions as well. Lord, we know that you see everything. You know what's going on and are in control. Give us hope. Change our behavior. Educate us on how we ought to see those that are marginalized. Bring healing to the racial tensions in our country as well as the world. Remind us that we are all created in your image and that hate has no place in our hearts and minds. Help us as Christians to stand in the gap for those that don't have a voice. In all of this, we pray in your matchless name, the name of Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome to Bel Air Church of the Nazarene. We are so glad that you are joining us this morning. This morning is week 13 um, that we have been online. So if you are one of the ones that cannot wait to meet in person, this Sunday is the first Sunday that we are doing outdoor service and uh, it will start at five o'clock. So if you want to sign up, you can still sign up. It's not too late. Um, just make sure that you sign up and um, come early so that we can plan for you. And um, we are very excited um, to see everybody and we're hoping that it's a good, gonna be a good time worshiping together. If you're not comfortable in joining us yet, we are still going to be providing the online service and that will continue at 9.30. So you will still be able to worship in that way. Speaking of online services is that our small groups are still continuing to meet on Zoom and some small groups are meeting in person now. So you want to check the website and check and see um, when your small group is meeting and whether they are meeting online or in person. Um, speaking of online is that you can still give online and you can use your church app and, uh, and give that way. Um, or you could also... Um, send us a check if you're more comfortable doing that and you can just mail that to the church church office. So we are in the middle of our virtual um, run for the homeless and it is in support of Welcome One Homeless Shelter in Hartford County. And if you still want to join in on that, you can still register for that. And um, it's a great way to get out and be outside and do something together as, as a family. You can choose to walk, you can choose to run. There's half marathon, open mile, and 5K choices to do. Um, it's a great way to, to get outdoors and to support a good cause. Um, at this time, I am going to introduce you to Doug Mann, um, he is worshiping with us this morning, and he is from the Scheffenhausen International Church of the Nazarene, and you're going to be hearing him speak. Good morning, Bel Air family. I'm Doug. I'm Jen. I'm Johnny, and I'm 13. I'm Sarah, and I'm 11. And I'm James, and I'm 9. And we're the Mann family, otherwise known as the Mann clan. And we uh, bring you greetings this morning during your worship service today. Uh, uh, from all the way on the other side of the planet. And some of you will uh, want to know where we're living now. So Johnny, can you explain? Well, we live in a small German village inside the borders of Switzerland, which is called an enclave. Um, 
uh, we like to call it Tsutsurmi, or I like the term Jurutsurland more. Um, and it's really fun and different here. Very good. And some of you may wish to know what we are doing here in Switzerland. Uh, James, would you like to start? Well, I am in fourth grade. I play on I play on a soccer team, and we are the only soccer team that is German that plays in the Swiss League. Pretty cool. Sarah, I'm in sixth grade. I love to sing and play the ukulele, and I am playing tennis in the village. Very good. Cool. Um, I'm in 8th grade and I like to collect Lego and sleep. Very good. He sleeps. He's a teenager. And <laughs> I'm uh, here doing regional personnel coordination. We have about 150 different missionaries who are on the region at any one time spread across all the different countries. And I help them to deploy, help them to get here, help them with all the kinds of um, logistics of living abroad, education, uh, schooling for their kids, uh, health insurance, development, um, personnel, training, all of those kinds of things, and then help them on the back end as they finish their assignment to go back to the countries from which they came. I'm currently serving as the regional finance coordinator. I've been only doing it a short time, uh, but it's a, certainly a privilege for me to be involved in finance across our region. I've worked with a great team finance missionaries uh, all across our region and of course it's our desire to uh, to use the Lord's resources in very responsible uh, ways uh, utilizing good stewardship so it's it's also that's an exciting thing to be involved in one of the other things that I, I get to do the mission is loan me to a local church here the international uh, Schaffhausen International Church of the Nazarene I'm pastoring the church and uh, it's been exciting to be a part of this local community. Uh, we, it, it's a community that's existed for quite a number of years, going back uh, to the 60s when European uh, Nazarene Baba College was here. And uh, we have since moved from that campus to a local school, uh, the international school where our kids actually go to school. And it's an English speaking uh, school as well. So we are situated right in the English speaking community uh, in our in our city, and uh, it's right where God wants us to be. And there are some exciting things that are going on in the church. We have people from all over the world. It's really reflective of of the term international. Yeah, we have a youth group that we just started, which has been really fun. Uh, seeing some of the kids um, from non churched families actually coming and studying. We've just done the Alpha course, and we're moving on to. Uh, studying the book of Acts and so it's really fun to see um, the kids coming together. We also have a women's group that is super international. There's loads of women from um, Africa, from Europe, from America. We love to get together and uh, walk, talk, eat as women do and um, we have our, one thing about our congregation is it's almost as young as it is old mm -hmm. when on a given Sunday we can sometimes be outnumbered by children so our Sunday school ministry is a large one and uh, when in need of prayer as we are slowly um, losing uh, Sunday school teachers people move on in international congregations so we're we're looking for some new new people to become members and to, to involve themselves in the children's ministry. Thank you for the opportunity to be a part of your worship experience uh, today. Uh, again, we greet you in the name of Jesus, and we pray uh, that God would continue to bless you as you serve him there in Bel Air. God bless you. Bye. Well, I want to say welcome to the Schaffhausen International Church of the Nazarene in Switzerland. It's great to be able to worship together through the proclamation of the word. Uh, our, our church family just watched a, a nice video where Doug Mann uh, kind of talked a bit about the ministry there and, and what he and his wife, uh, Jennifer, and their family are doing there. Uh, Doug and his family are, are, is a missionary family that we support through uh, faith promise funds that you give. And uh, we've, we've been keeping up with each other, with each, with each other via Skype. And uh, recently uh, we talked about me having the, the privilege of being able to not only deliver a, a message to our church community, but also to the Schaffhausen church community. And uh, so it's great uh, to, uh, to have you joining us. I, I know there's a, a time difference, and I think it's about six hours or so, and I think you're watching this message before our church even does. 
But if you'd like to join us for our worship later in the day, it'd be afternoon for you, I guess around 3.30 or so, 2.30, 3.30, something like that. Uh, feel free to join us uh, on our Facebook page, Bel Air Church of the Nazarene. And we would enjoy to uh, worship in song and uh, other ways with you as well. Well, today in the Christian church is a day that we observe that's called Trinity Sunday. And it's normally an opportunity for us to talk about one of the great mysteries of God, one that theologians have grappled with for, for centuries, hundreds and thousands of years. We have one God, but we know him as in three different ways, uh, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, thinking about the Trinity is a lot to me like considering an iceberg. There's a part we can see and, and we can describe because we see it above the water, but that really is, excuse the, the, the pun, that's just the tip of the iceberg. When, when we encounter that iceberg, we realize there's a lot more impact when we come into contact with it than what we can see above the surface. And when we spend time with the Trinity, it's, it's kind of like that. God reveals himself in Scripture as a triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but we can't get our minds fully around it. And, and when we encounter this God, the impact is more than we expect because there's so much more below the surface, so much more than beyond what we can see or our minds can understand. And, and when we, we study God as Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we, we realize this. God can't be fully understood. But this is a huge thing, though. This is a God who chooses to reveal himself to us. This is a God who is not distant. He is not far off. He's close to us. And we need God to be close to us right now, don't we? Uh, these last few months have been incredibly difficult because of COVID-19. We've talked about it a lot regularly. We've prayed about the virus and how contagious it is and how we've seen suffering and death. And we've seen our first responders who have, have sacrificed to be able to uh, treat those who are dealing with this. And we, we've seen those who struggle because we've been cooped up in our homes or our businesses uh, had to shut down and, and are just now starting to reopen again. And, and that's been a challenge in itself, right? And yet, uh, we have even greater challenges now, or these challenges that, that are now joined in with this pandemic as we, we deal with the unrest in our country right now, and 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 this this act of uh, of unfortunate violence, and, and our hearts go out for the, the family of George Floyd, and we see the the demonstrations that are happening, and 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 all this going on, and, and and there's just so much happening, and these together, it just feels like it's almost like it's too much. What does God desire to do in the midst of these challenges that we face? right now. So I want to take us to two different passages this morning. And each of them speak to us about God as the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And they give us a peek at that iceberg that's much larger that we can get our minds around. But I believe they also help us to know what God would, he would say to us in the place that we find ourselves in right now. And when we hear what he has to say, I believe we get a clearer idea of who we are to be as the physical expression of the love of Jesus Christ, living out the kingdom of God in this volatile place we find ourselves in right now. One of our passages is from the Old Testament. The other is from the New Testament. One, one takes place at the beginning of the world, the other at the end of Jesus' ministry here on earth. One passage tells us of a call that, God, that Jesus gave to, us, gave to his disciples, a commission that's for us to the other gives us a greater understanding of what this call is all about. The, the creation of our world is beautifully laid out in Genesis chapter 1, at the very beginning of the Bible. And, and there's a beautiful symmetry to the way that, that God creates. When you look at chapter 1, we, you, you see the first three days God created light, the, the, the skies and the seas and the dry land. And, and then in those next three days, God makes specific light fixtures like the sun and the moon and the stars. And, and he creates birds and, and, and fish to live in the skies and to swim in the seas. And, and he creates animals and humans to, to walk and live on this dry land. And, and each day, 
each time, each, each day, is pouring out at the end of that day that God saw what he did and it was good. And, and that means that what he brought into existence that day fulfills the purpose that he, he gave. We've talked about this a lot over the, the past year uh, as we've proclaimed, had God's word proclaimed in our services. And I'd like to focus in particular on the first three verses of this first chapter of the Bible in the book of Genesis. And I want us to look at Genesis 1, 1 through 3 together. Here's what it says. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, we, we see the Trinity is at work in these verses. I, I don't know if, if this is the primary intent here, but we at least see a foreshadowing of the Trinity in this creation account. We see that God is the creator. And, and this is a special kind of creating. The Hebrew word used for create here is exclusively used for God in the Old Testament. Some give it the meaning of creating out of nothing. It means that God spoke something into existence. In other words, this kind of creating doesn't depend on anything else. It, it's a kind of creating only God can do. And, and God, he's creating into this formless void. He's creating into darkness. And another way to view this void and this darkness is chaos. And, and we see that God is doing something good. He's bringing order into the chaos. He's bringing sanity into the insanity. The, the, the chaos in our world, it's amped up right now, isn't it? We, we thought the pandemic was more than we could handle, and, and now we're dealing with the racial unrest in our country, and the way this, it's being noticed and reacted to all over the world. I'm sure that our brothers and sisters in, in, uh, in, in the church in Switzerland, that you, you've heard about what's going on here. And, and we're left with questions about how we deal with this virus, which, again, our, 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 our friends in the Shaw House and Church understand this. How do we deal with this virus that's very contagious, for which there's no vaccine at the moment? How are we are to go about starting things up again and bringing life back to the way that it was? And now we have even more questions. We, we're wondering what it's going to take for our country to be at peace again after a, a senseless act of violence, which has led to protests and demonstrations. What do we need to do so that it doesn't happen again? And this chaos is not just about dealing with how to overcome this virus and the aftermath of racial unrest around our country. This chaos is also because there's fighting. And there's arguing, and we see a polarization even greater than, than ever around some who, around people that some believe something is right and the others believe that's wrong. And, and, and what something like should be done, others feel like that shouldn't happen. And, and in the midst of this chaos, just like in Genesis, Genesis 1, we, we need to know that we have a creator, a God, our Father, who is close. He is not distant. In those first verses of Genesis 1, we, we see the word spirit there. It's, it's the, the Hebrew word is actually, can, can be, can be uh, uh, the word can be wind as well. Uh, but, but these are interchangeable. And so we see that the wind of God can also be translated the, the spirit of God because it is the wind of God in some versions. And, and the spirit of God is, is hovering. I, I came across this image to describe what I, what I think is a good example of what hovering means. The Spirit of God is hovering like a, a bird that's nesting over her eggs, watching and waiting for them to hatch. Something good is about to be birthed. And, and we need to be able to see that, we, we, even at, especially and even at times of difficulty that we're in right now. God, God is nesting. He, he, he's close to his creation, and he desires to create something new, something good. All that needs to happen is for God to speak. And so we see this. As we, be, as we began verse 3, we, we see the word of God being spoken. And I intentionally, it was awkward, but I intentionally stopped in the middle of verse 3. Then God said. See, Genesis 1 is laid out in, in a beautiful way. We've already talked about it a bit. And, and for every creative act, God speaks. It says, let, and, and God said. And, and then what God said happens. He, he gives the word and creation 
takes place. And we understand when we look into the New Testament, this word is Jesus. John starts his gospel off by by speaking of Jesus in this way. In the beginning was the word, and, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. John will look at Genesis 1 and say, when God speaks, light happens. When when God speaks, birds happen. When when God speaks in the Gospel of John, in the New Testament, his word becomes flesh. Because he wants to be with us that much. When when God speaks, he lives among us with flesh and blood and bones. and And he teaches us and he performs miracles and he shows us the way to live. And when Jesus reaches the end of his earthly ministry, Jesus, as God, speaks to the disciples and gives them a call that is straight up a reflection of how God works as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we can find that call in our other passage for today from Matthew chapter 28. And we're going to be hearing verses 16 through 20. This is Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Hear the word of the Lord. Matthew 28, 16 through 20, the Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In Matthew's Gospel, this passage represents the first and and only time the disciples see Jesus since they fled during his arrest. Matthew doesn't record much of the material we we find in the other Gospels like Luke and and John. His encounter with Mary in the garden, uh, appearing to the disciples in the city, his conversation on the Emmaus Road, his hard heart with Peter on the beach when he asked Peter if Peter actually loved him. No, in in Matthew, the the women see the empty tomb and and, and then are told the good news by angels and, and they're instructed to share this good news with the disciples. And in that instruction, the disciples are, are told to go to the, the pre-designated rendezvous point Jesus had given them earlier in the gospel. And they likely went to that mountain in Galilee with both hope and with questions. And that's the way Matthew characterizes it. They, 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 they go there and they worship him, but they also have doubt. And I don't think it was like that some of the disciples worshipped and some of them doubted. I, I, I think they were all compelled to worship Jesus, and they all had doubts. They, they all had fears that they were working through, confusion even. W- would Jesus forgive them for abandoning him? C- could they really believe that what they were seeing, Jesus risen from the dead? And before we go any further, let's, let's just take a, a side step and not miss this example of grace and restoration of Jesus here. He forgives them for running away when he was arrested, for denying that they even knew him. That's grace. He, he calls on them to continue his ministry, promising them he'll be with them as they do that. He, he challenges them to continue what he has been preparing them to do for the time they spent with him, for those three years, and learning how his ministry works. That's restoration. And, and God's grace and restoration led to a challenge Jesus gives to his disciples in this Matthew passage, one that we know as the Great Commission. And and Jesus tells them that they will fulfill this commission in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And when we do this in his name, it says more about who we are than what we do. It means that we belong to God. It means that we are identified with him. We're we're part of his family. We're his people. It it, it also means that God, he's going to act on our behalf. He's going to act in us. He's going to act through us. And we see in this beautiful Trinity formula, we we see that we're invited to accept the mission of the Son, Jesus, who was obedient as the flesh and blood Son of God, even to the point of going to a cross to die for our sin. 
where it's driven by the, the will of God, the Father, the Creator. And we know from Genesis 1, we know from Genesis 1, when he creates, it's good. And from this commission of Jesus, we know that God wants to do more creating through us. And we are enabled by the power of the Spirit, who cares for us like a bird hovers and watches over the eggs in her nest. A Spirit who is the presence of God, who goes with us, reminding us that God is there wherever we go. And Jesus tells his disciples that they're to go and deliver this message and advance his kingdom into all the nations. The good news is it's meant for everyone. And in Acts 1.8, the, 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 when, when Luke records a similar call that Jesus gives to his disciples, the geographical intent is even clearer. As Jesus says, that they're, they're to be his witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And it didn't take long for that to be fulfilled. We saw it on Pentecost Sunday in Acts chapter 2, when the believers were filled with the Spirit, and they preached the good news to the crowd who had gathered below that upper room to try and figure out what the noise was about, what, what this, these, this fire and, and, and these, this, these sights that they were seeing. And these Jewish believers began to proclaim the good news of salvation in different languages, the languages of the Gentiles. People well beyond Samaria were hearing the good news. So you see, this call is more radical than it may seem to be on the surface for these disciples. The, the message of salvation, this invitation to, the peop, to be the people of God under the name of Jesus Christ, is not just for the Jews, but for the Gentiles too. Jesus is telling his disciples that they are to, to preach the gospel to everyone. Everyone should be equally invited to receive it. And the root of this call goes all the way back to our Genesis story. How does God want to create in the midst of this chaos? What, what calls on us, the church, the ones who are, who are meant to take seriously the commission Jesus gives to his disciples in Matthew 28? Let's look at Genesis 1, 26 through 27, later in the chapter, to get a better understanding of this. And here's what it says. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. There's that special word for create again that only belongs to God. He's creating in a special way again. It, this word for create, bara, is used seven times in Genesis chapter 1. Three times in, this, in verse 27 alone, what we just read. God is doing something special in the creation of humankind, making us in his image, making us in his likeness. It's like a mirror reflecting the image of the one looking into it. Or, or even better, like a child is a likeness of their parent. This is the beginning of it all. When, when God showed us how he designed humankind in his image, male and female were created the same. God created humankind as equal to each other because all are made in his image. And Paul has this piece of creation of the creation account in mind when he takes the equalness of creation beyond gender. And he says this in Galatians chapter 3, verses 28 through 29. That there is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you, for we, are all one in Christ. We, we, need, to be, we need to see from God's creating of humankind, that there is an equality. There is no difference in value. There's no special privilege given to one over another. We see this in Jesus' call to his disciples also in Matthew 28, to take the gospel to all the nations, because we're all equally deserving to hear it and to have the opportunity to receive it. I've struggled this week, I've wrestled this week with what this call specifically means in the time we find ourselves in. And, and I've seen us wrestle and struggle with this pandemic. And, and, and I've seen us even more so wrestle and struggle with what's going on as far as the, 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 the 
the racial unrest in our country. What are we to do? What is this call about? What can we learn from these two passages, one from the Old Testament and one from the New? If we see each other as equal, if we see everyone created in the image of God, if we recognize that God has given us a call to share the good news of the kingdom because God wants to create again through us, then we understand that call. If we are to live out the good news of salvation to everyone around us, that's our call. Then on a practical level, I believe it means something kind of simple. We need to listen. We need to listen. When we listen, it means that we hear the cries and we, we grieve over the acts of violence we are seeing in our nation. First and foremost, it means that we, that we grieve over the, the act of violence on George Floyd, which started all this, but it really didn't because this kind of violence has been going on for too long. We agree with the acts of violence that have come out of peaceful demonstrations that have hurt people and destroyed property and have caused some to not be able to hear the message coming out of those protests. It means we listen to the voices of those who feel marginalized, who are not treated equally, but because we see everyone as loved, valued, and equal, because that is the way God created us. It means that we hold back saying something quickly because we believe we have it right and the other is wrong. And instead of speaking quickly, we try to understand by asking a question. Not, not a question that accuses or is meant to get that person to agree with us or, or show them that they're wrong, but a question that's a curious one where we genuinely want to listen more. It means that we genuinely want to see another person's point of view. It means that we, we even seek out those who are trying to be heard or who have a different point of view, and we have a conversation where we listen and we ask God to show us what he sees and hears. It makes me think back to a, a, a really uh, powerful book and movie that, that I've, I've watched. It's called To Kill a Mockingbird, and what Atticus Fitch says to his daughter if you can learn a simple, a simple trick, Scott, you'll get along a lot better with all kinds of folks. You never really understand a person until you consider things from their point of view, until you climb the side of their skin and walk around in it. It, it means if we see someone post something that shows pain or anger on social media. We, we reach out to them privately and, and ask how they are and how we can pray for them. I've reached out and I've had some conversations this week, and one in particular I have with a black, black friend stands out to me. They, they told me how they have found their voice in a peaceful local protest demonstration, a, a voice for the frustrations they had felt regarding race and equality. They, they told me how there, there are aspects to what's going on that they don't agree with, like the looting by some and, and the unfair words and actions by a few to police officers who don't deserve it. They told me of the post they had seen on social media that had been hurtful and painful because they are put there by people who they regard as friends. And my conversation with this person reminds me that social media or digital communication it's not really the best place to have this conversation when you don't agree. Conversations like this need to be had face to face. When, when we think more about what we say and, 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 and there's a tone of voice there that we can hear. And I, I, I do believe that postings in a general way can, can be a good thing and they can be a way to communicate. But when we reach the place where we're arguing about where, where we're arguing about what we said, and it's over social media, I believe that we may have reached a place where we're doing more harm than good when we continue that conversation there. I've seen several people post this, a good thing, over the course of the last few days. It gives a great description through a prayer by St. Francis of the attitude we have when we listen like what I'm talking about here. This is how it goes. Lord, make me an instrument of peace where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, let me so faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, 
joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to loved. For it is in giving that we receive, it's in pardoning, it's in, it's in forgiving that we are pardoned or forgiven, and it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. God is still creating. It didn't stop in Genesis 1. And it's a special kind of creating that he does. It's doing something when it seems like nothing can be done. Bringing newness and order when all is chaotic. And he calls on us to share this good news with everyone, and especially during a time like this. For us to listen for where God is working through the cries of those who are suffering and through the voices of those who are in pain and who are angry. And I believe that when we do this, we join in the creative activity of God. And we're living out the kingdom of God where we are. This past weekend, our Board of General Superintendents uh, sent out a communication for all churches and called on our those of the Nazarene Church to, to be in prayer and fasting on this day for, for what we're facing around our country and which is being felt around the world. And, and I, I want to pray a prayer in line with joining millions of others who are doing the same thing here today. And I want to invite you to, 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 to fast something this day, if you feel led to. Fast something that reminds you to be in prayer for what we're going through right now. Fast to remind ourselves to pray for there to be a hope that springs out of this belief that God's creative activity can be shared and experienced as we live out the kingdom of God. Let's pray together. Well, God, we, we join together in prayer right now to you. This is a, a, a massive prayer of unity that's being prayed by so many all over this country. And we're joining our brothers and sisters in Switzerland and praying that, uh, that we would see you as creator God work. That, that we would accept the, 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 the mission of your son Jesus as we are offered your grace because of his death on a cross for our sins. We, we want to be empowered by your spirit to be able to be the means by which the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, is shared with everyone that we come in contact with. And through that sharing, through that love being shared, that there will be a hope that comes in the midst of this chaos and in the midst of this despair that we're feeling right now. We are thankful that you are a God who is not distant. You are a God who is close. We are, we are thankful that, that, that you are a God who provides. And we are thankful that we, we, you are a God that we can trust you for the future. We can have faith that you work for our good. That you want to do good in us and through us. May we listen and be used by you to advance your kingdom in this way. In the master's name of your son Jesus Christ, we pray this prayer. Amen. Let my life be like a love song. Let my life be like a love song. Let my life be like a love song to your heart. Let my life be like a love song. Let my life be like a love song. Let my life be like a love song to your heart. So let justice roll like an endless stream flowing through my life to the poor and weak. Let the things I do and the words I speak reveal the awesome love you have shown.
shown to me Let my life be like a love song Let my life be like a love song Let my life be like a love song To your heart I would invite you to receive this blessing benediction. For those of you who might be newer to this, this is a, a way for us to actively respond to what God has spoken to us during this service. And uh, you can choose to, if you'd like, to, to reach out your hands and receive the blessing, the benediction, in this way as, as we strive to actively, actively uh, respond to what God wants to do in us and through us. So I invite you to receive this blessing. And, and now, may God heal our land through his creative goodness during these challenging times. May we embrace the call to listen so that we can see and hear as God does and see him and join him where he is already working. And as we live life between the Sundays, may we experience the blessing of the Apostle Paul. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Let my life be like a love song. Let my life be like a love song. Let my life be like a love song to your heart. Let my life be like a love song. Let my life be like a love song. Let my life be like a love song to your heart. Have a great day, everybody.